is everybody doing tonight? We're going to be doing a couple day, a couple hours of private pilot study hall. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I am a um, testing, testing. Okay. Yep. I am a flight instructor, right? Uh, so if you're new here, I guess I am a flight instructor. I'm an airline pilot. I'm just out on medical right now. So um, we're going to be doing a little bit of instruction. So I've mm, kind of got a plan. For today, we're really going to go over uh, last uh, long last two days. Did 15 hours yesterday and did nine more today. Well, Steve, um, go the fuck to bed. <laughs> if you if uh, do you think uh, your first class is going to get accepted? It's very possible. It's not it's not up to me. If we're just going to be honest, it's it's not up to me. I thought it was going to get cleared. Um when I sent in the paperwork a while ago and it didn't. So fuck do I know at this point? Um, but I've got a plan for what we're going to be doing today. Uh, if that plan works with y'all, we're going to, we're going to go, go through with it. So the plan for today is to go over like what lesson one would be if you were to go take your private pilot course. And what lesson one usually turns out is an introductory flight. All right. An introductory flight is going to include things like, hey, we're going to do like a mild pre-flight. This is kind of the controls. Um, this is this is kind of how everything works. OK, I have a health issue that needs proper documentation for an AME for my first class. I'm hoping I'm going to pass it. I hope you pass it, too. I really hope that the FAA, um, you know, changes the way that they they do a lot of this stuff, because because currently it's 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 rough. Um, ooh, sorry about that. Uh, currently, it's it's rough like and it doesn't need to be that rough uh if we're just going to be entirely honest um but make sure you drop some likes make sure you make sure you hit that share button get some other people showing up get some other people hanging out cuz uh the more people that hang out the more fun this is what's up stacy how's your day going uh hopefully better than steve's steve's uh steve's had some long couple days um and i'm i'm telling steve he needs to go to bed <laughs> um so we're going to go over a little introductory flight and we might, we might do some ground reference maneuvers. We might do some ground reference maneuvers. Let me, let me, let me see what you guys think about the, whether or not we do some ground reference maneuvers. I do have a new control setup. Um, War Thunder. We're going to do some Microsoft flight sim. We're going to do a quick little instruction today. Cause that's what was on the schedule. And then we're going to get into some War Thunder. All right. We might even use the Airbus control stick. Cause that's currently what I've got put up on my desk right now is the, uh, Airbus, the Thrustmaster Airbus control stick, uh, building Legos, which is the Concord. That is awesome. That uh, is awesome. I, I kind of want that Lego set. If I'm just going to be entirely frank, that thing looks pretty cool. Um, but uh, just woke up from a four hour nap. Oh, well, you know, hang out then. Maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll learn a thing or two together. Sorry, I have to adjust my seat. There we go. Seat's better. <clears throat> now it's hot on the side. There we go. All right. Uh, it's four feet long. That is ridiculous. What's up, Sean, right? So <clears throat> as I've said, we're going to be, does anybody have any questions before we get into it? Is anybody actually going through or, you know, planning on getting into flight training sometime soon? Anybody, 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 anybody? No, no, no. Oh, okay. So making some mac and cheese for dinner. Then I'm going to sit on my ass in my chair. Uh, for a few hours. Ooh, some mac and cheese does actually sound good. I had grilled cheese and potato salad. Um, well, you got any questions, Stacy? You say you're going into flight training soon. Um, you got any questions for that that first lesson that you're going to be going into? Um, I know a lot of students. They're like, "How long is it going to take? How much is it going to cost? Do I have to have a bunch of money saved up? What books do I need? Um, anything like that?" And <clears throat> books, I always recommend the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge is an absolutely amazing book, um, and it's free. Well, that's awesome, Sean. I um, I teach mostly in jets now. I'm trying to brush up on uh, a lot of the other stuff, uh, you know, a lot of the general aviation stuff, and I'm 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 trying to make sure that I'm going through this and refreshing my mind memory and, and going through all my lesson plans and everything just to make sure that I'm not giving any improper information. Cause I know things also change things, things definitely change from, from time to time. <clears throat> so 
But um, yeah. So we're going to... The Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, like I said, the Federal Aviation Administration, uh, or the FAR AIM, the Federal Aviation Regulations, and the Airman Information Manual uh, is a great book. A lot of people want to get the paper one. The paper one's like $20, and you got to buy a new one every year. The app is like 10 bucks, and I have never touched a paper FAR AIM since. I absolutely love that app. Um, <clears throat> which plane would I recommend? Depending, what is it? Um, one second, let's go ahead and ban them real quick. Awesome. Uh, Q key likes. I don't know what that means. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah. So, I mean, Cessna 172 is a, is a, is a great aircraft to train in. Um, short field landings can be a little rough in the uh, Cessna short field landings can be a little rough in the Cessna. I'd, I would definitely, um, you know, the Piper is a little bit better with it because you can just kind of cut the power and it'll flop down. Um, diamonds. I, so I've only flown a diamond uh, sim, so I don't, I don't have a whole lot of experience with them. Um, I don't really like the fade deck, if I'm going to be honest, because diamonds do have fade deck, if I remember correctly. Uh, I don't really like the 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 whole if I have an alternator failure, I got 45 minutes to get on the ground kind of thing. But I guess if I'm 45, if I'm more than 45 minutes away from a place to land, <laughs> I probably shouldn't be there. Um, so um, but I've heard that they have a really, really flexible wing. So they handle turbulence a lot better. Um, some of the complaints I've heard about the diamond is it's bubble canopy, um, especially in Arizona where I did most of my flight instruction, a bubble canopy would just, you would just be roasted. Absolutely roasted. Um, well, appreciate you showing up, D-Putt. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for showing up. Um, absolutely love it when y'all are showing up and hanging out. It, it, it makes, makes these streams uh, so, so worth it. And I might do one in the summer. Do what, Stacy? You doing a lesson in the summer or getting an airplane? I always recommend buying an airplane. I definitely recommend buy that airplane. If you're looking at an airplane, buy it. Fucking buy it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it's like a magnifying class. Yeah, and that that that's definitely what I've heard when it comes to the um, the diamonds. But again, I've never flown one. Maybe I flew one years ago. I might have like one hour in a diamond, if I'm going to be honest. Um, but I've flown Moonies, I've flown Pipers, I've flown Cessnas, I've flown Lakes, I've flown, I desperately want a MiG-21 or an F-5C in real life, for the love of God. Uh, actually, there is a, an old fighter jet trainer that is for sale in my local area. Um, for those of you who don't know, me and Well in Septic Life, um, <clears throat> we've hung out a couple times, and he wants me, he at one point wanted me to teach him how to fly a fighter jet. And I'm like, dude, I don't know how to fly a fucking fighter jet. <laughs> like, what are you, what, what are we getting at here, man? Um, plus, like, they're expensive. But this fighter jet trainer is like 55 grand, 60 grand. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can find it. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've definitely had people uh, you know, ask me like, I oh, want you to teach me how to fly a fighter jet. And it's like, okay, sure. Like, <laughs> why not? Like, um, let me, let me, you know, if you're willing to pay me, if you're willing to buy the aircraft and then pay me the hours it takes to get the training in it to properly be, you know, uh, yeah, it, it, sure. Sure. Um, Well, I'm glad y'all are napping before you show up to these streams. Um, by the way, we I am looking at some new uh, subscriber icons. They're gonna be these cute. So you see the you see the cows. You see the cows. I'm gonna try and do like some little subscriber icons for those cow with those cows. So um, if you're curious, subscribe. Currently, we've got like cheese slices, cheese blocks, cheese wedges, stuff like that. Then I will go get a job and save up the money. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's 50, 60 grand and it's not in great shape. It's, it's, it's rough. It's, it's, it's rough. It's rough. Um, 
cheese cars. That's what you guys want for your subscriber icons, for the love of God. Oh, by the way, by the way, the um, FAA mugs are back in stock on TikTok. And I, I adjusted them. I adjusted them so that I can hold them with the appropriate hand in which I want to drink with, and you can still see the label. It's it's kind of it's kind of nice. Um, all I know is I don't want to sit in a plow truck for a few days. Oh, is that what you're stuck doing for the next few days, Steve? Oh, that's 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 gonna be rough. I did just go get a new, um, a new uh, what's the word? Snowblower, and it's awesome. I had a I had a I had a I had a yard work snowblower for the longest time, and it was it was rough. Um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think without further ado, we are going to get into some Microsoft flight sim and we're not going to get into the Airbus right away. I do have the Airbus sticks, um, but we're not really going to, we're not going to do the Airbus. Um, so Stacy, you're the one getting into flight training. Um, the, the, the most current, like the soonest, right? Um, I completely forgot. What did you get for Christmas? Uh, Ghost Rider. I think you got a Meta Quest 3, didn't you? Um, so yeah, Stacy, what aircraft do you want to see? So what do you want to see us train in, uh, Stacy? Since you're going to be the one going to training, the the you know the soonest, right? Oh, we got a new follower over on TikTok or over on Twitch. That is awesome. Thank you so much for that follow. Uh, making these these things so much so worth it. Um, who was it? Who was it? I did see the, the little thing flash up, but I don't see the I don't see it in the chat feed. It's, uh, Sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll see it in a, in a little bit. There we go. We're going to move this down. Cessna 172. All right, that's awesome. We will get up, get a Cessna. You know what? We're just going to get rid of this. Uh, if you want to join the club, you can join the club. There we go. So let's get into a Cessna 172. Where do you want to train out of today, Stacy? Stacy, where do you want to train out of today? Airbus, uh, the Thrustmaster control setup. Um, I don't have, I don't have like the Logitech or the SciTech or anything like that. This just doesn't seem to make a, a whole lot of sense to me. The game is over, the music is overpowering. There we go. Um, so it, it's really just up to you. It's really just up to you. Where are you thinking? Where are you thinking? We changed the carbide blades on our Western stars uh, Monday, 11. Oh, oh, y'all are out there making y'all shit fancy uh, somewhere in Mexico. So I don't know a whole lot in Mexico. The best I can do uh, close to Mexico would be uh, Williams Gateway. This is where I did all of my flight training out of. OK, so let's let's go down to Williams Gateway. And what we're going to do is we are going to hop into again, as you asked, a Cessna 172. Um, where is the 172? Where is the 172? So we got a 152, we got a 172. Do we have a better 172 or is it just that one? Nope, it is just this one. Awesome. So customization, anything good? What do you want your tail, tail number to be, Stacy? We'll say Stacy Blue Ram. Um, call sign, we're good. 654. All right, we'll call it 654. And we're going to take off runway 30. What we're uh, actually what we're going to do is we are going to park. We're going to park and we're going to taxi. Okay. Um, we are going to park right there, set as 
departure. Awesome. Then we're going to fly it. Let's update this. There we go. Microsoft Flight Sim. That's all updated. I think I can get Microsoft Flight Sim. Oh, I mean, if you can, I definitely recommend it. Microsoft Flight Sim is absolutely wonderful. Let's go to the daytime. Okay. So <clears throat> when you first get to your airplane, you're obviously going to check a whole number of things. I like to start right up on the top with the fuel. Uh, the fuel is really, it's, it's, I feel like that's really just the best place to start when it comes to, um, I didn't know for points you had, yes, I do for points. I do have mock check rides, right? It's so if you need a mock check ride, just keep stream, just keep watching the stream, save up enough points and we'll get you a mock check ride in. All right. Cheese, big fan of your page. I moved uh, to Florida in October and started flight school. Uh, seen you a bunch. That's awesome. We'll stick around. We're going to be doing kind of lesson one right now. And every Wednesday, or at least we're going to try every Wednesday, um, keep up on the schedule over on Twitch. <clears throat> and we're going to be doing a bunch of lessons, right? We're going to do lesson one, which is really just the introduction to an aircraft. The control surfaces do this. Um, what have you, right? And uh, flying corn dog. I was also a check pilot for UND Aerospace Foundation. Um, so I'm not just like doing mock check rides. It's kind of like bullshit. Like I am a CFI. I'm an airline pilot. Um, you know, I, I've got pretty much every instructor rating that you can get. And uh, I have also done mock or I have also done stage checks for a 141 program. So I've got a little bit of experience doing this. So if you're concerned that, you know, your check, your, in your instructor might be mailing it in or what have you hang out. We'll do some mock check rides. All right. Getting to the end of PPL now. Well, if you get on over to Twitch. You keep watching over there, you can get enough points and we'll get you a mock check ride. So first thing I like to check when I get to the airplane is how much gas is in it. Cause that's most likely what's going to take the longest time to get. Um, if like, let's say I've got to wait on a fuel truck or whatnot. Right. Um, <clears throat> so right up here, we've got our fuel caps currently, obviously they're closed. We're not really going to do anything with them. Uh, we can't really do anything with them in the sim. Next thing you're going to do, you're going to come over here to this little window, and that's where you're going to check your oil. Well, that's awesome. Yes, I am a 141 instructor. I have also taught part 61. I have learned part 61. I see the value in both, right? All right, D-Putt. Thanks for showing up. So the next thing that you're going to check, you're going to come right down here to the cowling. There's a little button right there, and there's going to be a little uh, dipstick in there. You're going to loosen up that dip dipstick. And you're going to check the oil again, depending on the aircraft, you're going to be anywhere from four to eight quarts of oil, um, stream on the 15th. What's going on on the 15th. Um, <clears throat> after that, we're going to come right up here to the nose. Uh, we're going to make sure that the prop is attached. I know that sounds like a dumb thing, but wiggle the prop, make sure it's attached. <laughs> Um, then we're going to actually run our hand along both sides of both sides of the blades. We're looking for anything that our fingernail catches on. If our fingernail can catch on it, we should probably take a look at it. We should probably have like some kind of maintenance or somebody take a look at it. Um, because remember this thing's spinning at some pretty, pretty, pretty insane speeds, right? Well, um, if I'm not working, I'll definitely try to stream on, uh, the 15th New York Yank. I heard the dipstick and I got giggles. I'm so immature. Oh, for the love of God. Thanks for that follow, official Norris. Thanks for that follow. Um, then next thing we're going to check is we're going to or we're going to actually wiggle the spinner as well and make sure that the spinner is actually attached. We're going to look and make sure that all the bolts are there. Then we're going to look inside here and make sure no birds have put any nests in there. All right. A lot of times these airplanes, they sit for a little while. Um, for example, my personal aircraft, it sat for about two months without flying it. Um, we're going to check inside both ones. Next, there's a little belt right here. That's going to be your alternator belt. 
you're going to twist it. And if you can twist it farther than 90 degrees, then the belt is either worn out or loose and it needs to be replaced. If you can't twist it to 90 degrees, then it's too tight and it's going to damage your alternator. Again, it needs to be adjusted. <clears throat> Next thing you're going to do, you're going to take a pen and you're going to ding the exhaust. If you hear a rattle, the exhaust isn't attached properly, there's loose bolts or the muffler is cracked and you run the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. So ding that. Um, <clears throat> And uh, next thing you're going to do, make sure your air filter's clean. This is the air filter for the engine. Make sure it's clean. Make sure there's no birds in it. Make sure there's nothing in there. Then you're going to come down here to your strut. Uh, right there at the strut, you're going to make sure you got about three fingers of extension. Okay. Uh, then we're moving our way around to the other side of the aircraft. This you shouldn't have to do anything with. This is the uh, external power port. <laughs> Uh, this is if, like, for some reason the battery's dead. This is how you can jump the airplane. Next thing you're going to check is your static port right here. Oh, yeah, that is, like... Yes, this is a Cessna 172, all right? Next thing you're going to do, you're going to look at your static port. You're going to look at your static port. You're just going to look at it. Just look at it. Don't fucking touch it. Don't get your greasy little fingers all over it. Just look at it. Make sure there's nothing in it. <clears throat> all right? Then you're gonna come up here, you're gonna make sure your inlets are empty. No birds have built any nests or anything in there. Then you're gonna come up here, you're gonna check your pitot tube, make sure, again, there's nothing in here. At this point, I like to open up the door, I'll power on the airplane, drop the flaps, turn the pitot heat on, and just wait a little bit. At this point, I like to turn the lights on as well, um, and I'll do a quick little walk around, making sure that all the lights work. By the time I'm done with that walk around, the pedo heat should or the pedo tube should be warm, so I can check that. Uh, why would there be a bird there in the first place? Uh, because birds, just like most animals, build nests where it's warm and cold or and dark, right? So, warm, dark. If I'm a bird that's cold and just trying to find a place to get away from predators, why would warm and dark not be a good place? All right. Is it possible for you to cover the instruments in the future? If not, um, so it's not necessarily covering the instruments, but I can cause some instrument failures. So we will get into instrument failures eventually. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to drop our flaps. Let's see if I can drop my flaps. No, I can't drop the flaps because the plane's not powered on. Yep. Um, what do you need to do if you run out of gas? Well, you're going to land. I mean, uh, what would happen if you didn't find it and started the plane? If you didn't find what? Oh, uh, then it would die. It would die. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to be like rude about it, but like if there was a bird in your engine and you started it, it would die. Um, it would probably try to fly out. It would hit the prop. You would end up with a prop strike. You'd probably be looking at, you know, around $5,000 in inspections at that point. So it's, it's pretty important, right? Um, if there's a bird that's in your cowling, it's going to try and fly out. When you go to start the engine, you're going to end up with a bird strike. You're going to end up with a bird strike, a prop strike, and you're going to need about $5,000 in inspections. Uh, no, I do not. Well, okay. I don't plan on having $5,000 for that inspection. Right? Yes, this is why we check for nests during pre-flight. Um, I just noticed the rice heater has a fighter pilot helmet. The CFI has been through it. Yes, yes. It's, I was waiting. I, I'm a little disappointed that it took y'all that long to notice. If I'm just going to be honest, I'm a little disappointed it took y'all that long to notice. Um, all right. So <clears throat> after that, we're going to come over here to this side of the wing and we're actually going to grab the wing and it must be the safety guy. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Um, then we're going to come over here to the wing and we're going to grab the wing and we're going to shake it. All right. Um, we're going to grab that wing and we're going to shake it. It seems stupid, but if it clunks, you're going to be real glad that you shook that damn wing. Well, I'm glad you saw it right away, Steve. <laughs> All right. After we shake the wing, we're going to come down here and we're going to uh, we'll check the, the brakes. It's kind of hard to actually see the brakes. 
Um, we're going to come in here. We're going to check the brakes. Most training aircraft don't have wheel pants because they don't want you students to, to destroy them. Uh, <laughs> like, that's just that's just the truth. Um, all right. And at that point, we're going to check our uh, control surfaces, make sure that they move the appropriate way. We're going to check our elevators, make sure they move the appropriate way. We're going to check our rudder, make sure it moves the appropriate way. Uh, and we would check our flaps to make sure that they're not bound up and there's no damage inside the tracks. All right. Now we're going to get inside the airplane. And you see this thing right here that says, do not touch the screens. Don't touch the goddamn screens. They're not touch screens. Keep your greasy fingers off the G1000 screens for the love of God. <laughs> okay. Um, so now that we're in the airplane, let's start testing a couple other things. We can come over here. We're going to turn our alternator, our master on, and we're going to turn our avionics buses on. And we're just going to listen for the fan. We might not hear the fan. Um, and we're going to turn those off. Then we can turn on all our lights, like I said, that we already checked, but we're going to turn them on and, and we're going to go back outside and we're going to look and make sure all of our lights work. All right. All those lights work. We can kill them. We're going to go mixture out because that shouldn't have ever been in. And now we're really in here. The pre-flight is done at this point. As you can tell, pre-flights on an airplane aren't, they're not as hard as, as some people would kind of like attribute them to be. They're, they're pretty straightforward, okay? So we've got the entire pre-flight done. Now, how do, we, how do we prime the engine? How do we deal, how do we prime the engine? How do we get the engine started? How do we um, start the aircraft? Right. A lot of people think that like you're just going to stick the key and crank it over just like you would any kind of car. Nope. Airplanes are a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, I get to sit with our aircraft router Friday as a job shadow. Oh, what are you going to be doing with that, Amber? All right. So. We're making sure we don't have any pop circuit breakers. If we did any pop circuit breakers, why are they popped? We're not just going to push them right in. Um, we're going to figure out what went wrong here. Okay. So with that in mind, we are going to go mixture rich, crack the throttle ever so slightly. Um, we're going to crack the throttle ever so slightly. And we're going to turn our fuel pump on. At that point, we should start to see uh, fuel flow or fuel pressure. Yep, fuel flow gallons per hour right there. We saw it, and now we should be able to crank the airplane. All right. Now, this is a fuel-injected airplane with non-fuel-injected airplanes. There's a little bit different way to do it. Um, but look, there it goes. Completely started up. No problem. Now that that's all started up, we can get our master on and get any kind of lights on that we might need. And uh, we're going to taxi out to the runway. Does anybody have any questions about anything that we've done so far? I know it was a little bit, it was a little rushed. All right. Does anybody have any questions about anything that we've done uh, thus far? Um, trying to get the most ground time for maintenance uh, to do their jobs. They assigned me checks for mandatory by the FAA. Oh, well. Oh, you're trying to move over to be an aircraft router? Oh, what does that job entail, uh, Amber? Uh, I, I seriously have absolutely no idea what that job entails. But now that we got the airplane started up and the flight instructor's getting paid, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna check our system. So press the enter or the rightmost soft key to continue. And that's just gonna bring up our MFD. We're gonna get into what the MFD does a whole lot later uh, if you continue on. Um, but we're, we're really not digging into the uh, MFD at this point in time, because it is, it, th th there is a lot going on in the MFD. And we're most likely going to be dealing with the MFD when it comes to um, instrument training. Okay, so not a whole lot for us to be doing right now. But for now, we can taxi out to the runway. So we're going to release our parking brake. We're going to use our rudders to actually steer. And I think I'm actually going to steer right. And I'm going to actually lock up that right brake. And we're going to try and make a nice sharp right turn. Come on. Ooh. Well, we're going to take a left turn. Good thing we can't crash into the into the ground crew. 
just started commercial training. You got any tips? Slow down on the controls. Slow down on the controls. That that's really my biggest tip when it comes to um when it comes to commercial. A lot of commercial students want to hurry up and rush through things just like they've been doing, you know, for the rest of their the a lot of their other training. They've been kind of rushing through it. They've they've been kind of like, "All right, let's get this done. Let's get this next thing done." Um but no, slow down, smooth on the controls. Uh, as for the, 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 the commercial rules and regulations, those are kind of rough and you're, you're really gonna be just kind of working your way through those for the most part. Uh, if you've got somebody from Embry-Riddle, if you know, if you got a buddy that's at Embry-Riddle, I definitely recommend talking to them because they have a really good PowerPoint when it comes to the commercial regulations. But just really think of if an airline can do it, I probably can't. All right. Uh, how does studying compare to the instrument stuff? I mean, you should always be studying as, as much as you can. Um, the instrument is all new stuff. So I feel like a lot of students struggle a little bit more with instrument. Um, commercial, you're finally getting back into the airplane, right? You're finally getting back to looking outside. But the commercial regs are really going to get you. The, the commercial regs are kind of rough. Um, they, they are kind of rough. Uh, but best rule of thumb is if an airline can do it, or if an airline is already doing it, you probably can't, or at least you should start looking into the regs and see what you might fall under. Okay. Um, I know when it came to my commercial check, ride, I think somebody, I got asked this really weird question. Like you and a buddy want to start a scuba diving and air tours business in Hawaii. Um, is there anything that you should be kind of concerned about? And what they're looking for you to answer on that one is the, is the, the whole, how long do you have to wait from a, you know, controlled ascent from scuba diving before you can go flying is really what they're, they're getting at. Um, they plan routes for aircrafts and maintenance they need. So assign docks, P checks, find a way to get more ground time for the aircraft so that they can work on it, do tail swaps when, oh, wow. Well, that sounds like a really in-depth job, Amber. Um, I really hope you get it, because like that sounds like a really in-depth job and it sounds like it'll actually help a lot of people too. So, but I mean, there's not a whole lot of gray area in the commercial regs. Like they're, they're pretty straightforward on what you can and can't do. The commercial regs are pretty straightforward. And the problem is, is they're written like a, they're, they're written for a lawyer. They're not written for you. Um, and that, that's, that's really why a lot of people, you know, screw up on the regulations is because they're just not written for you. So you need a mnemonic, you need a training tool, you need a, a PowerPoint written by a lawyer to break them down and explain them. Right. Um, Yes, the, the regs are are rough. Okay, the regs are an absolute they, they are rough to learn. Um, there there's but you'll the best way to learn them that I have noticed is try to apply them. Try to apply them. Try to think about situations in which that rule would apply instead of just reading the regulation. Read the regulation and go, okay, how can I build a scenario in which I could operate within this reg or in which I might be a little confused about what this reg means and I might risk violating it? That's that's really the best way to, to start understanding the regulations is try to build yourself a um, try to build yourself a, a, a scenario in which these regs would become applicable. All right. Come on. There we go. We're trying to get turned around because this is where you do most of your run-ups in Williams Gateway. Anyone who's been here knows this run-up spot. Um, and here we are. We're going to come to a complete stop and we're going to set our parking brake. Then we're going to do a run-up. Does anybody know what a run-up is? All right, anybody ever heard of run-ups? Uh, I used to do the 49 code CFR of hazmat for my job, part of the interview. Uh, to decipher them. Okay. Does anybody, so Stacy, I forget. It was that me. Was that you saying you don't have any questions? Or was that you saying you don't know what a run up is? Um, well, either way, we're going to go through a run up because that's the appropriate thing to do. So what we're going to do in a Cessna, the way that we do a run up in a Cessna 172 with an IO 320, um, is we're going to set 1800 RPM. 
We're going to make sure our parking brake is set. So what a run-up is. A run-up is a way for you to, to put the engine under stress, for you to put the airplane under stress and verify that it's not going to give up on you when you go to take off. All right. I don't care how many times you've flown an airplane. I don't care if it's your personal airplane. Every time you go to leave the ground, do a run-up. I don't care. Sure, if you're doing stop and goes, if you're doing touch and goes or whatnot, but if you landed and then you are going to take off, you know, after shutting down the airplane for 30 minutes, do a run-up. It doesn't hurt anything to do a run-up, okay? It costs you a little bit in gas. The little bit in gas that you're going to spend on that run-up is a whole lot better than a fucking insurance claim, okay? So... We're gonna put the engine under stress and verify that it's not gonna give it up. Sure, oh, come on, Necromancer. I am well aware that my mixture doesn't need to be full rich for taxi, but we're, we're, we're in the training environment. We haven't covered mixture yet. So, I know, you're gonna fail your plugs. So let's do a run-up. The way we do a run-up in a Cessna 172 is we are gonna go mixture full rich. We are gonna set 1800 RPM, okay? So you can see our RPM gauge over there. We're reading 1520 right now, 1530, 1530. And keep it coming up, keep it coming up, keep it coming up. 1720. A little bit more. And 1800. 700 RPM per mag. All right, all right. I'm not going to pay attention to Necromancer anymore. Now we're going to check our magnetos. What we're going to do is we're going to turn one magneto off. All right, we're gonna go to the left one. And we're gonna see about a hundred RPM drop. All right, they, especially with field elevations, that's for the love of God. We're gonna look for about a hundred RPM drop. All right, we got 110 on that one. Then we're gonna go back to both. We should see it come back. And then we're gonna click over to the other magneto. And again, we should see about a hundred RPM drop. Your aircraft is gonna have specific limitations on what the split can be. All right. And we're going to bring them back to both. We should see the engine come completely back. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring the throttle all the way out to idle. Pull that throttle out until it does not come out anymore. Okay. And we're going to make sure that the engine doesn't die. Make sure it's between five and 800 RPM. That's what idle should be in a Cessna. All right. After that, we're going to bring those. We're going to bring it back to about a thousand RPM. And that's a run up. That's it. That is all you have for a Cessna 172. When you get into, you know, more complex aircraft, you got to feather, you got to test the props and stuff like that. But for the most part, that's all a run up is when you get, when you're in these simple aircraft. Okay. Now we're going to go take off. Anybody got any questions before we take off? All right. If it sounds wrong, go back to the ramp. Exactly. If something sounds wrong, if there's a rattle, if it, it idles funny, if there's, if it doesn't sound normal. All right. Now I'll always recognize, all right, are you in a different headset? What have you? But if you're concerned, go the fuck back, get somebody to take a look at it. What's up, Chrissy. Thanks for showing up. Drop some likes while you're here. Um, but if you're concerned about the quality of your aircraft, you are concerned about the, the, the maintenance of your aircraft after a run up just go back to the ramp go talk to the mechanic okay uh flying corn dog what are you asking about your cell phone for oh yes you can use your cell phone in the general aviation airplane before we go what's up yes there is no airplane mode when it comes to to general aviation aircraft uh <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a flaps 10 takeoff. Uh, we're going to taxi out to the runway. And the reason we're going to do a flaps 10 takeoff is just it gives you a little bit more takeoff performance. What's up? Got another subscriber. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Flying Corn Dog. That is awesome. <laughs> 
Oh, that was Necromancer gifting a sub. That is awesome, Necromancer. That reminds me, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do something real quick before we, before we leave. All right. Um, oh, well, I, uh, lift off 58 knots. Yeah, I believe it's about 58. Um, if I remember correctly. It's been a little while since I've flown a Cessna, if I'm going to be entirely honest. I'm used to the FMS calculating liftoff speed for me. So we're going to turn our landing light on, taxi light on, make sure all of our lights on. We're going to get our fuel pump on, make sure that the fuel pump is on. Um, we want to have as much fuel flow into that engine so that we don't have to worry about any kind of uh, fuel starvation issue on our way out. So get a little bit of scoochums in. Gonna break out the giant E6B at the EAA Museum. <laughs> oh yeah, I do need to, I, I, if I'm gonna keep doing these, I definitely need to brush up on my E6B. Uh, no passengers today bringing my E6B. All right, we are taking the runway. We're gonna make sure we look out the right. Runway is clear, look to the left. Ain't nobody on the runway and we're gonna be taking off. Fuel pump on? Yes, yes, you should definitely have your fuel pump on. A lot of schools, um, don't want you to turn your fuel pump on for takeoff because it does cause wear and tear on the fuel pump. But just think of it. If your mechanical fuel pump takes a shit on a takeoff, wouldn't you rather have something, uh, wouldn't you have, rather have a backup? Takeoffs are kind of, kind of important. Careful. There's a Cirrus on a 10 mile final. All right. And we're going to set full power. We're going to need some right rudder, right rudder, right rudder. All the engine instruments are in the green. We are looking over there. Airspeed is alive. And there's 58. We're going to bring that nose up. We're going to try to climb out at VY. Bringing that nose up. VY. Does anybody know what VY is? We're climbing. Flaps can come up. Bring in that nose up, 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 up. We're going to need some trim for this. Oh, that's the wrong way on the trim. Uh, climb speed for best rate. Yes, that is exactly what VY is. I think we actually need to get this weather out of here. Um, yeah, we definitely needed to, to up that. And we're going to need some right rudder the entire way. Okay. Now, do you see that brick? Well, uh, we're actually going to cl climb out and get to the practice area before we before we start talking about everything that we're seeing on the display all right now if you are going to be training at williams gateway with und aerospace foundation uh with in partnership with chandler gilbert community college you are going to become uh very familiar with a, a geographical phenomenon known as the gap what the gap is is it is it's a gap between a few mountains and that's it right there, right off the nose of the airplane. That is the gap. This is how you leave and enter towards the Williams Gateway Airport. Uh, scud running builds character. No, it doesn't. It's a terrible thing. Do not scud run. Do not scud run. I have, I have made that mistake once or twice, and it was a, it was a terrible mistake every single time. Um, but yes, Chrissy, you are right. And Tubbs, you are right. VY is the best rate of climb. Does anyone know what VX is? Anybody know what VX is? Got that get there itis for the love of God. Anybody know what VX is and why? And why? Well, maybe not why. That's some advanced aerodynamics. We don't really need to get into why. So VX is actually your best angle of climb. All right. Yep, the flaps are up. We did bring them flaps up. Uh, VY is your best angle of climb. It is your best height over distance. VY is your best height over time. Okay. Yes, Necromancer's got it right. Uh, VX is best known as your obstacle clearance altitude. Okay, 
your obstacle clearance altitude. So if you are worried about clearing a mountain, clearing trees, you're gonna climb at VX. You are not going to climb any slower. You're not gonna climb any higher. What's up, uh, plum, plummet, plummeted Ben, plummeted Ben. How's your day going? And uh, then, then Yank, that's a nice cockpit modeling. Yes, this is a G1000. Um, this is a Cessna 172 with a G1000 in it. This is this is pretty di pretty much exactly what I trained in. This is, this is pretty much the exact aircraft that I I, I trained in. Um, you'd think I'd be a little bit more familiar with it, given that I trained in it. Uh, uh, touch the screens. No, do not touch the damn screens in the G1000. We already went over that. We already went over that. Do not touch the G1000 screens. All right. Now, since we don't have autopilot, well, we actually do have autopilot, but we're not going to turn it on. Um, since we're not using autopilot, we do kind of have to constantly be on the controls. And I feel like the best way is I really should have these controls up so that you guys can kind of see them. So you can see like the small inputs that I am giving. They're not, they're not big inputs, right? A lot of students put your greasy booger hooks all over them for the love of God. A lot of students, they kind of want to grab the, the, the yoke and, you know, make these big kind of jerky motions. All right. Let the airplane fly. Let it ride any kind of turbulence that might be there. Uh, it's going good. Just got back from flying. That is awesome. Where were you flying to? Where were you flying from? If you look off to the left, there's actually uh, the Pegasus Airfield out there. Yep, there it is. Pegasus Airfield. It's a private air park. There are houses there. Like people get to live at the airport. They get to drive from their like garage that has their airplane in it. They'll like taxi from their garage that has their airplane to the runway to take off and go places. It, it, it must be nice. Look, there it is. There it is. Oh my God. I wish I could go there. Yeah. Goals, right? Life goals. All right. Now that we are, we are clear of a Bravo shelf. We're going to add some more power in. We're going to get it back up to maximum power. We're going to bring it up to about 10 degrees nose up. And we're going to add some trim until we can relieve the control pressure. Okay. A lot of people want to fly with the trim. Uh, how would you rate the physics of, I uh, see. So I've never played P P3D or X plane. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really know. Uh, cheese, watch the video of C-2 or E-2 pilots doing the carrier landing. The control input amounts are nuts. You know, I could, I definitely would see that those control inputs for landings, uh, can be a little rough. You know, if you've seen any kind of airliner videos of people landing, the control inputs seemed like a lot. Uh, what do you think of the physical aspect versus the real on this platform? Um, you know, the, the lack of force feedback is a little disappointing. Like Microsoft flight sim doesn't support force feedback anymore. So even if you do go spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on a force feedback setup, it's not going to work in Microsoft flight sim. Um, so I'm, I'm a little disappointed with that. If I'm just going to be entirely honest, um, I, I really didn't expect them to get rid of force feedback. The older versions of Microsoft flight sim, um, are pretty good. Now, does it handle the same? I mean, I reef the stick back and it stalls. I push the stick back, stick forward and it, and it, and it accelerates. Um, does it handle like the real airplane in most parts? I mean, it's, it's close. It's close enough. I wouldn't necessarily say you should be out here practicing landings in Microsoft flight sim. Um, but you can definitely practice like the procedural stuff in Microsoft flight sim. But I've said that about most simulators, even, even the Airbus simulators that I teach in for work, accelerated stalls in the pattern. Nah, I'm good. Um, you know, even the full motion sims that I teach in and work at work, are close like they're not they're not perfect um i would definitely say that flying the real airplane is easier because again you have some feel in the controls you can feel the airplane a little bit more um you know like imagine driving your car oh shit i just remembered we should turn the fuel pump off um how many pumps are primer before an engine startup uh, it depends on the aircraft uh this one none because it's fuel injected um, 
just some end of course stuff done flying around Appleton and flew to Wapaka and back. Well, that's awesome. So you're finishing up private pilot? Um, but I mean, most airplanes, I usually do two, maybe three shots of primer before I go to start it. Um, well, that's awesome, Plummeted Ben. You got any questions? You know, you got any questions? Uh, if you if you watch long enough, we can get. You, oh, you already you already know about the the mock check rides thing. All right, we're gonna climb up to about five thousand feet, and we're just gonna we're just gonna go through what all the different controls actually do, and we're actually gonna look outside the airplane and show you, you know, what all the different controls do. Thanks for those likes, Chrissy. Keep them coming, though. Keep them coming. Uh, eight hour bottle of throttle, sir. No departure shots. Wait, what? Uh, do you have to do steep turns as a maneuver in the ATP world? Depending on the type of training you go through. If you go through AQP, no. If you go through like a traditional check ride, yes, it is still an option. Three shots of primer. Oh, <laughs> that's what you meant. Sorry. Um, so as we climb, we need to we need to start bringing out a little bit of mixture so that we can keep our RPM. Uh, we can talk about mixture in a later lesson. What's up, Jake Miller, Mill Iron, Mill, Mill Iron, Jake Mill Iron. How's your night going? So we're getting right up here at about 5,000. What's the difference between AQP and a check ride? So AQP is advanced qualification uh, program. It, it, there's just different, the, the check rides are just different. Um, so AQP, your, your oral is a written, like your oral exam is, it's a written exam. Um, these sessions should be every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. If you get on over to Twitch, there's actually a schedule there. If you get on over to Twitch, uh, Cheese Pilot, you should see like a logo somewhere around here. Um, if you get on over to Twitch, there is a, a schedule, okay? Uh, we're going to try to keep them on Wednesday, but I do also work. Um, so we are right up here at altitude uh pull up that egt so we can run lean of peak gas is expensive no we'll we'll talk about that in a later lesson we are going to cover how to properly lean an engine when we start talking about uh um cross-country procedures all right we might cover it a little sooner i'm not sure yet so let's talk about the different controls um let's go to the outside of the airplane so we know we've got ailerons right here We've got flaps right here. We've got the elevators back here and we have our rudder back here. Okay, so let's go back inside. So if I just bank, I'm using no rudder right now. Let's see what that nose is doing. All right, the nose kind of lags behind. So as you can see the ailerons really, they, they introduce a rolling moment, right? But since one aileron's going up, the other one's going down, you end up also introducing drag on the wing that's going up because you're trying to generate more lift on the outside wing, on the wing that's going up. And when you generate more lift, you generate more drag, which calls, causes what a lot of people have already said in the comments, adverse yaw, which is why we need to use rudders. And a lot of people make jokes at airline pilots because they have yaw dampers, not yaw dampeners. Um, sorry, it was, a, it, was a, it was a shitty joke there. Um, Feeding the dragon, that's awesome. But we have adverse yaw and we need to overcome that with the rudder. But let's talk about what the rudder does. So I'm gonna give it some right rudder. As you can see, we're kind of just pushing the nose around. We're not, we're not really doing much else. It eventually causes the airplane to bank over. And, you know, depending on the stability of the aircraft, you can try to fly with just the rudders. Um, and you can, you can try to straighten the aircraft out with just the rudders. So if you need, you know, if you need your hands free, you can kind of try to fly the airplane. I don't really recommend it, um, but the rudders really just push that nose around. So when you're pushing that nose around, if I give it some right rudder, the left wing is accelerating faster than the right wing, which causes the left wing to generate more lift, causing us to roll over. I didn't touch my ailerons at all. You can see this controls right here. I'm gonna give it some right rudder, and you can see we're continuing to bank over and that 
that yoke isn't moving around at all. This is all being done with the rudder pedals. All right. So as you can tell, we need to use the rudders and the ailerons in junction to make an appropriate turn. So let's just use some rudder and some aileron to make this turn. So I'm in a turn. Now the airplane has started to descend because I have split my lift factor. I have split my lift vector into a vertical and horizontal component of lift. Now what it ends up happening is as I, well, okay, I split my lift vector. We talked about that. How do I overcome that? I overcome that with the elevator. All right, you can eventually overcome it with trim. I don't really recommend it at this point, but you use elevator. So for a fully perfect turn, when it comes to airplanes, you are going to not only need bank, you're not only gonna need aileron and rudder, you're also gonna need some pitch. And it, eventually you're gonna be able to do turns just like this, completely level, at about 90 knots. I'm going to need a little bit more power. Steep turns are impossible in a sim. Oh, dear Lord. I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm not doing that bad. I'm only 25 feet low. All right. Now, obviously, at this point, I would be handing the controls over to the student. You would work through the controls and uh, see if you can kind of figure out what's going on. Right. Now we have a couple other things that we can take a look at. All right. We have throttle. A lot of people forget that throttle also has an effect on pitch. Okay. So if I bring the thrust or the throttle completely out, I can bring it completely back to idle. The airplane is going to pitch down because I'm losing both accelerated slipstream. And since the engine is mounted below the center of gravity, I'm also losing that pitching moment that the engine provides. And the, in, the airplane is going to try and stabilize at the airspeed I have trimmed it for, right? A lot of people that's here might not <laughs> really necromancer. I didn't do any clearing turns. Okay. Always do your clearing turns before you start any of these maneuvers. Um, <clears throat> but if I bring the power out, I lose that accelerated slipstream and I also lose uh, that pitching moment caused by the thrust being below the center of gravity. But when I add power and I go all the way up to full power, squawks. When I add power and I pitch the air, er, the airplane's gonna wanna pitch up. But if I get completely off the controls, the airplane's also gonna start slightly veering off to the left. This is what's known as a left turning tendency. And when we, when we get back on the ground, we might, we might pull up a whiteboard and, and dig a little bit more into the left turning tendencies. Uh, if you know, if you guys are, are so inclined, um, but does anybody have any, any, any questions about the, the controls and, and how everything kind of works in, in injunction together. I know Stacy was here and he's starting flight training soon. Um, so this was, this was mostly for you, Stacy. I know you're here pretty much every goddamn stream. Um, so I'm glad to like give you something specifically for you. Now these controls don't necessarily work the same throughout the entire speed range of the aircraft. All right. So if I bring some power out and I add a little bit of pritch. Uh, okay, serious tape. Talk a little bit more about why you don't fly with the trim and only use the trim to reduce controls uh, forces. So the trim isn't as quick to respond. The trim is actually uh, causing the the elevator to move around. All right. So if I try to fly with the trim, I'm going to have a lot of of back and forth with the trim. And what I mean by the trim is this wheel right here. This is actually controlling a little tab on the elevator. We might actually be able to see it. Yeah, see, so the trim is actually controlling this little tab. I should be able to move it. All right, you can see that little trim tab moving. And what it's doing is it's actually controlling the elevator. It's, it's putting an input into the elevator, but you can see it's not responding as quickly, but also, um, 
if I start trying to fly with the trim, I'm getting to a point in which I do not have enough control left in the airplane to really keep the airplane where I want it to be. Right now, I've got it pretty trimmed down and I have to give almost full aft to get the airplane to stay level. All right, uh, let's head back inside. So this is full aft, and this is what I have to do to maintain level flights. So this is really why we don't fly with the trim, is we don't want to get stuck in these oscillations of trying to correct too much trim. And we also don't want to get into a point where we can accidentally stall the airplane and not be able to recover from the stall. So that's, that's kind of the two main points on why we don't fly with the trim. What's your favorite online pilot training uh, course? Gold Seal, maybe? Uh, to be honest, I don't know what Gold Seal is. Um, and caveat for anyone trying to learn control inputs in Microsoft Flight Sim, it's way, yes. Don't try to learn these control inputs in Microsoft Flight Sim. It is so hard to get that feel for the controls uh, in Microsoft Flight Sim. Uh, little inputs are key to trim. Yes, yes, that is that is a perfect way um, to, to think of it. It's just small little inputs. If I could show y'all my, my controls, um, you would see I'm just doing small little inputs. I can show you the trim wheel down here. Let's zoom in and take a little bit closer look at it. Like this is the kind of control, this is the kind of trim inputs we're really looking for. Thanks for that follow, spilled my coffee. Thanks for that follow. It is not big inputs, all right? They are very little inputs. And when you, when you eventually get skilled enough, you're gonna be able to count how many of these little knobs you're going to need of trim to really get the aircraft where you want it to be. Um, I know when I was fin you know, when I was just finishing up flying, um, you know, as a flight instructor, I knew exactly. It was like three little nubs for this, four little nubs for that. And it was, I was right on. I was locked in exactly uh, where I needed to be. So small inputs. Do you ever use trim and ground effect for landing my CFI? No, no, that is a, that is a fucking terrible idea. Uh, that is an absolutely terrible idea. Any flight instructor that's using trim and ground effect. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I like, I, I, I really kind of hate to, to bash on other instructors when they're intentionally doing showboaty stuff that is, that is dangerous. I gotta bash them. All right. I gotta bash them. Um, yeah, no. I mean, even if it was the 90s, I mean, we, 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 we should definitely have, you know, some, some, we should have high standards. We should always have high standards. As instructors, um, we're really impacting people throughout their entire career, right? So we should always instill safety and appropriate procedures um, when it comes to flight training. Now, I, I don't mean to scare anybody, but like, there's no need to take excess risk to showboat is really, is really what I'm getting at. There's no need to, to take excess risk to just show off. If your statement ever, if what you're about to do ever starts with hold my beer, watch this, or hey guys, this is cool, or hey, watch what I'm about to do, um, you probably shouldn't be fucking doing it. Right? Unless this, the, the statement is, hey, look what I'm about to do. And then you immediately put in a, a, a safety, you know, related report. That's the only, only showboaty shit I can really condone. Um, yeah, don't idolize Trevor Jacob. For the love of God, don't idolize Trevor Jacob. Um, all right, how long have I been teaching? Oh God, I, I think I might have to ask my wife on that one. Um, I've been teaching Oh, what would it have been? Like, I, I think I've been teaching for like five, maybe seven years at this point. Um, seven years, seven years, Necromancer. Uh, seven years, sorry, I am. Um, but yeah, if anybody's got any other questions, you know, if anybody's getting into some flight training, um, you know, let me know. I'm always, I'm always happy to help. Now, we have a couple other control surfaces that we have to talk about. We talked about trim. We talked about elevators. We talked about ailerons. We talked about rudders. Um, now we're going to talk about flaps and we're going to actually land at the Pima air park. And yes, I absolutely love teaching. Um, I, I really regret ever leaving it. Um, sure. The money's not great, but you're still home every night and there's more to it. 
you know, um, any tips for a new CFI? Um, admit when you're wrong. Admit when you're wrong. Be able to admit that you don't fucking know and that you need to go ask somebody or you need to look it up or you need to get help from an outside source because it's beyond your, your wealth of knowledge. You know, and that's the thing. As a flight instructor, you are part of someone's aviation career for the rest of their life. If you suck at your job, they will have to explain those checkride failures for the rest of their goddamn life. All right. And also, if you do a great job, like my 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 wife was an instructor and her students absolutely loved her. And some of them went back to China and we got invitations to their wedding years later because they loved her so much as an instructor. Um, what's my thoughts on an accelerated IFR course? As long as you're willing to put in the effort and actually learn, I have no problem with an accelerated course. I have absolutely no problem with any of the accelerated courses. All right, so we've got flaps. What can flaps do for us? So flaps are going to change what's known as the camber of the wing, all right? This is gonna allow us to generate more lift at lower speeds. Makes it real easy for us to land, right? If I try to land with no flaps, I end up having to come in real flat and real fast, causing me, you know, to be a little bit unstable, okay? Um, so what I really want to do is I'm going to start lowering my flaps as I start getting lined up for this runway. And I'm still, I'm still a couple miles out. Um, so we're not going to, we're not going to be introducing all the flaps right now, but yeah, as a instructor, be willing to admit when you're wrong and stay up to date, stay up to date, make sure you understand the aircraft that you're in and make sure that you're willing to fight for your student. Okay. I, I had an air China student that, that he just couldn't get over motion sickness, but this guy had so much fight. He would puke into a bag, wrap it up, tie it up and get right back into it. Okay. He studied, he stayed focused and he eventually became an amazing pilot. He's currently flying an Airbus A320 for, uh, air China, but because of his motion sickness, he almost got sent home. Um, and they were saying like, I don't know if you're ever, if you know, if you're going to be a pilot. And I said, if you send him home, I'm no longer going to be an instructor here because there is no reason that we can't help him through his motion sickness. He's studying. He has the information. Um, he, he's studying. He has the information he's putting in the effort. There are countless students here that aren't doing that. So if we're going to keep them around, we're going to keep this kid around, or you're going to lose me as an instructor. This kid would go through one steep turn, yak, tie it up in a bag and immediately go into the next steep, steep turn. Um, so as we are continuing down, we're going to introduce some flaps. And we're looking for our aiming point. We could talk about aiming points and touchdown points and float and all that jazz uh, later on. But at this point, we're really just going to be focused on the landing, trying to make a nice, a nice, nice purdy landing. Um, mixture is already full rich. Thanks for that heads up. But we are going to turn our fuel pump on. All right, we're gonna give our next notch of flaps. Slowly bringing that power out. We're starting around 1600 RPM and we're gonna keep coming down, keep coming down. I cannot even imagine uh, with steep turns. What's the outside air? So we are in a fuel injected airplane. We don't have car peep. Yeah, I like to have the fuel pump on for every landing and takeoff um, cuz it just provides you another layer of safety. It provides you yet another layer of safety and and why wouldn't we introduce more layers of safety? Sorry, I'm getting a little unstable cuz again, this is a sim. Um 
I see that necromancer. Um, we're going to scoot our head back a little bit so that we can actually see a little more. And I know I'm a little fast, but these are kind of hard to, it's a sim. So it's kind of hard to land. All right. And after we get through this landing, we're going to get into some war thunder and, uh, I'm going to see, I'm going to do my best to, uh, fly the, uh, war thunder with this control setup. So we're going to get right around here. We're going to look down to the end of the runway. We're going to bring that power out. We're just going to float. We're going to float. We're going to float. We're a little left of center line, but we can correct that later. And floating along, floating along. There's our mains. Let the nose down. Have you been motion sick while training? No, I've never been motion sick. So, um, yeah, the, the synthetic vision on the G1000 is, is, is pretty nice. Um, I, I didn't train with synthetic vision. I, I never had synthetic vision in anything that I trained in, but I could definitely see the value in it. Um, but no, I, I, I never, I never, uh, had synthetic vision or motion sickness in any of my, uh, training aircraft. Now we are going to wait until we completely clear the runway before we do any, anything else. I, I went way past the, the taxiway that I intended to actually take. And everyone always asks, how fast do I taxi? How fast do I taxi? Well, you taxi at the speed in which you'd be comfortable hitting something. Well, and then add 10 knots because nobody's comfortable hitting anything at any speed, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> now we can see our green lights coming up. And we should be able to clear it this first or at this next taxiway, applying a little bit of brakes, slowing it down. And let's go ahead and taxi off. Now, if we're concerned about making a turn, apply some of that inside brake. Apply some of that inside brake. Yeah, a, another good rule of thumb for taxiing speed is a brisk walk. All right. A brisk walk is, is a nice another nice way to put it. All right. So now that we have come to a complete stop, we are going to go through our after landing checklist. Now I don't actually have the checklist here with me, but for the most part, it's bring out some mixture, turn the fuel pump off, turn the landing light off. I like to turn the strobes off too, and make sure that your flaps are all the way up. All right. And then we're going to taxi to our ramp. Come on, let's get moving. Yes, yes, you bring the mixture out just a little bit in taxi. Cause again, you don't like you don't need full rich to taxi around. Are our instructors not teaching this? Like it's in the POH. Like one, instructors aren't teaching it, and two, like students aren't reading the POH. That's concerning. <laughs> Now, there are some airplanes that don't recommend it. Like, it's not in the POH at all. It's not that they don't recommend it. It's that they, they it's just not in the POH. But if you actually read the the the, the manual for the engine, it, it, it is recommended that most Lycoming engines get leaned out during taxi. Um, you know, inspect your plugs. If you have your own aircraft, um, inspect your plugs. See what the plugs look like. Haven't trained since 97. You know, things might have been different in 1997, but this is just stuff that, that I've always learned that, I, you know, I've read from the manuals. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend it. Plus it burns less gas, All right? We're applying some brakes and there we go. Now we are down here at a, a complete stop. So we're going to do a couple things. We're going to make sure our taxi light is off and we are going to make sure, yep, just the taxi light is off and we're going to turn off avionics bus one and two. And at that point, we're going to pull the mixture. All right, we're going to pull the mixture out and then we're going to turn off the master. We're going to turn off the beacon. We're going to turn off the nav and we're going to turn off the magnetos. Uh, it depends on the aircraft. Um, 
for the lean during mixture or for the lean during taxi, what we're actually looking for is an RPM rise. So we're going to set the uh, RPM to about a thousand and then we're going to look for an RPM rise and then a slight RPM decrease. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just go through it. Let's just start the airplane back up and we're just going to do it. Like if you're curious, we'll just do it. Now we do have a hot start, so we should just be able to put the mixture in a little bit of throttle and we should just be able to crank it. All right, there we go. We got the engine started up. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to set a thousand RPM. Okay. So we're going to set about a thousand RPM right there at a thousand RPM, a little bit more, a little bit more. Then we're going to come down here to our mixture and we're going to start scrolling it out until we see about a 50 RPM rise. All right. Well, we just lost that RPM rise. So we're going to bring it back in until we get back to that RPM peak. So we see we got a 20 RPM peak. You see that gap right there? The gap that you see right there. That's how much you want to lean it to. That looks like it's going to be about maybe one and a half fingers. Okay. And that's how much you lean it out to. Now, remember when you do your run up, you want to do your, um, oh, where's the RPM? Sure. We'll go over that again. The RPM is right here. Oh, does TikTok not see it? Oh, shit. All right. Yep. All right. I see. So the RPM is right here. All right. Can you still see it? All right. So we're going to set the RPM up to about a thousand. So there's the RPM. It's about a thousand. And we're going to scroll the mixture out until we see an RPM rise and we should see a slight RPM decrease. And then we're going to put the mixture back in until we see that peak. And then we're going to look at our mixture right there. And we're going to see like, right, that little gap. That's where we want to lean it to whenever we taxi for today. All right. Now, if you go to a different altitude, like if we put this airplane in like Sedona, that's, that's a couple thousand feet higher, right? And again, this is the recommendation from Lycoming. This isn't a cheese pilot recommendation. This is a Lycoming recommendation, right? So I, I hate, I hate tribal knowledge. I hate tribal knowledge recommendations. I want from the manufacturer, give me recommendations from the manufacturer. Give me documented and peer reviewed recommendations. So that's, that's the only recommendations I will ever that's the only recommendations I'll try to give. All right. Uh, I'm trying to get tips. Uh, I'm trying to get into flight school soon. Thanks for the tips. Uh, awesome. Well, we're going to be doing things like this. We're going to try and do them every Wednesday. If you get on over to Twitch, there is a schedule there and you should see it. We do a lot of war thunder. We do a lot of Microsoft flight sim. So come back, right? Just come back, go to that schedule. See when we're actually going to be going live. Um, but now we're going to get into some war thunder. All right, unless anybody's got any other questions. Anybody got any other questions? Yeah, if anybody's got any other questions, feel free to ask. If not, we're gonna take a mild inter or we're gonna take a, a slight intermission, then we're gonna get in some more thunder. Sound good? 